Unfriendly Sudbury. Well, that's the title of this Zoom. And it's being recorded right after the city budget was announced and an increase of 4% for us lucky Sudbury taxpayers. And we have a distinguished panel here with us, Lionel Rudd, who you often read in the paper and occasionally hear on CBC radio, and John Gall. Now, John Gall, welcome. This is the first time Hi, Hi. On, a, on a call. It's, uh, it's great to have you here with us. And of course, you may have read John's comments occasionally in the paper, in the media as well too. So we are advocates. We are normally pretty friendly people, but uh, you know, the problem is that, uh, well, we, we do have a problem. And that's that we're probably not as friendly as we used to be. Now, we did just a little short presentation here uh, just to get us underway. And uh, we have on the screen right now, you can see two logos and uh, there's two websites. One is Friendly to Seniors, and John Gall and I have been involved with Friendly to Seniors for many years here in Sudbury, and also with the local organization CARP, that's Canadian Association of Retired Persons. And, uh, you know, when we were with Friendly to Seniors, John, you may recall that some people said, well, how come, how come we're not friendly to everybody? So we devised a new logo and also a new website. Just a couple of slides here showing this is our library. And believe me, based on the surveys that we've done with seniors and others, most do not want to see the library replaced. I would because there's lots of parking, it's conveniently located. And uh, take a look inside. Does this not look like a modern library? Open, spacious, and uh, friendly. <laughs> this is downstairs, and there's a large reference section as well, too. Built in 1952, renovated in 98 extensively. There's even a reader's lounge. This is what we're looking at right now, and a lot of events held here. You can see there's Sudbury Secondary School across the street, and it's in a what we consider to be a great location. This is the back of the library, a fine structure worth probably millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars, and most people think it should be should be maintained. There's our arena described as the heart of the downtown, and uh, could be renovated at less cost than new. And there's parking available. I've talked about this. There's an abundance of meeting and entertainment venues. The Radisson can take up to a thousand people. This is the Crucial Club. There's lots of other venues for entertainment. Sudbury has. Well, lots of them. And we have the Bell Rock Mansion, the Art Gallery of Sudbury, a recognized historic, historical site that, you know, most communities would would love to have a building like this. And as, as, as a the entrance, the reception area and the gift shop, uh, the lower area has a thousand square feet uh, exhibition area, upper area, a thousand square feet, once again, well lit, and the 420 square foot exhibition area also on the upstairs. And there's lots of parking on site, uh, storage area as well too. Here's the stairs to the second floor. And we have the conservatory just off the, this is Bell, wife of Bill, William Bell. This used to be one of her favorite spots. Here we have the stairs to the basement area, the kitchen and washrooms that need an upgrade. And also probably we need an elevator in this facility. Uh, beautiful location. And uh, we're suggesting it could be a combined museum and also art gallery. So there it is, more information on these uh, websites, Friendly to Seniors and Friendly Sudbury. But getting back to our situation here now, we're starting off by saying we're not as friendly as we used to be. Now, why aren't we as friendly? It's because of the, the tax increases that are at 4%, where Thunder Bay has 1.6%, Aurelia and uh, the Barry area, less than 1%. And we're some of the highest, if not the highest tax increase uh, in the province. Is this one of the reasons that we're unfriendly, people, Lionel? Well, I would say it's partly the cost. And it's also the entire destruction of the ambience of the peripheral communities that used to be the hamlets and towns and villages that existed around the core of the city. Back in the old regional government days you're talking about, right? Exactly. Uh, and the thing is, if you didn't like living in, in uh, Carvercliff, you could move to Chelmsford and have an entirely different um, living environment. Um, if you lived, wanted to move to Hamner or Valcaran, you, you certainly most definitely had a, a different cultural 
experience because of the predominant French, which in itself was a fabulous charm. And then you have the beautiful places like Walton, Norton, uh, Onaping. Um, all these places have their own ambience and own contribution. Uh, now, um, Sudbury is not a good place to live. Uh, and these amenities have been um, destroyed slowly but surely, but they're constantly under threat of closing things like uh, the Anderson Farm in Lively, uh, of course, Meatbird Lake is on the chopping block. There's issues with some of the remote arenas and recreation areas, but slowly but surely, um, it's becoming a very, very, I say, unfriendly environment. Um, besides the cost, so the value of our tax dollars, well, it's just not worth it. In fact, we, we get no return. Uh, we have a city administration who um, neglect everything. I'm thinking of the uh, um, Tour, a tourist place uh, in uh, High Falls in Onopi. Um The uh, local people used to help maintain um, a welcome center there. Neglected, couldn't be used because the city people decided not to do anything about it. So, so, that's, so that definitely doesn't sound too terribly friendly. But uh, before we go any further, let's have a little bit of history. I came to Sudbury in 1966 and uh, after I came, you know, after looking around and it was pretty desolate right back then, you know, there's, we, we were not a green community back there in 1966. But John Gall, you came to Sudbury after researching a number of other communities in the province because you're from Southern Ontario, as I was originally from the Toronto area, but uh, you were from the, around the Burlington area and you came to Sudbury. Why did you come? You, you, you thought we were friendly then, is that correct? Yes. Um... Actually, I was very, very concerned. Uh, my wife was very, very concerned about leaving all our friends in uh, Burlington. We both agreed that this city is a great jumping off point for all our outdoor activities. Uh, and that was the major reason we, are, we came here is because Sudbury is located uh, right close to Killarney Provincial Park, which happens to be my favorite. It's got tremendous cross-country ski opportunities here. Uh, you've got Georgian Bay, which is great for big water paddling, whether it's canoe or kayak. Uh, we looked at all the other cities. Um, Thunder Bay is too far away, beautiful place, but too far away from friends and relatives, right? Uh, Sault Ste. Marie, again, a little bit further down the track, another beautiful place. Uh, but what I found after living here in North Bay, of course, uh, a little bit too small at the time. <laughs> Well, this, so, uh, this, uh, so you came to it town. Was a Goldilocks, yeah. you know, it was a Goldilocks yeah. thing. This turned out to be the best place for outdoor-oriented people who wanted to do a broad range of outdoor activities. To yeah, but, but 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 how about the cultural? Now you're using your wife's uh, uh, technology there, her iPad. Uh, Brenda yeah. Brenda was a little bit concerned about coming to Sudbury. The, the outdoor activities were fine, but how about yeah. how about the, the so-called cultural uh, uh, aspect? Well, believe it or not, our biggest concern was, do they, have, uh, do they have a coffee culture? Because coffee cultures imply, in her mind anyway, sort of a friendly city where people stroll around and visit coffee shops and chat and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, she was also concerned about the downtown. Uh, and at the time we arrived, it's not nearly as, it wasn't nearly as bad then as it is now. The cultural thing I checked out, I actually talked to the leader of the Polish community because his daughter lived in Burlington. And I had some, I was talking to people about my concerns, maybe the cultural thing. I said, there's lots of different ethnic groups up there. And I don't know whether we'd fit in. And uh, I talked to him and he said, are you kidding? He said, this is the ethnic groups here. All of them get along well. We attend each other's festivals. So we knew there was a rich cultural life by talking to him. When we actually, until we moved up here, we didn't realize what an incredibly vibrant arts community is up here. Uh, all the arts, visual, um, you know, performing arts. Uh, the music scene is incredible for the size of the population. 
everything's accessible. It's a 20 minute drive at most. And the prices are dirt cheap compared to what they'd be in Burlington or Toronto. So no, we uh, were impressed in 2004, actually. And in terms of friendliness, what we found was that the people in Sudbury, when we arrived, were much like the people in Newfoundland and the Maritimes. They were friendly, they were welcoming. We integrated into the community very quickly. Uh, we have no complaints about the people, except when you put them in their cars. <laughs> they tend to drive a little bit aggressively and way too fast, you know, even by Southern Ontario standards. So uh, I don't think the people of Sudbury themselves, the average person, are, I don't think they're unfriendly. I think they're very friendly. There's the opposite. But I agree with Lionel. It's the institutions that bother me here. Uh, he talked about, you know, he, he made reference to the city hall, the city hall management so on and so forth i agree with that um so i think what's unfriendly i made a list of things that really tick me off here first of all <laughs> you have a list. just before you go with your list let's go back to line on here how he felt about Sudbury when he came here and why did you come here lionel you were you worked at uh, laurentian for 17 18 years is that correct i worked at laurentian 27 but i came here in 1968 um, I came here to get a job at Inco, and uh, it was a real happening place. Of course, the age group, the age demographic was a lot different then than it is today. But still, even then, it was an, um, a patchwork and agglomeration of fabulous little communities. You know, um, Larchwood, <laughs> who remembers where Larchwood is? <laughs> uh, McCree Heights was, you know, uh, where I live now was Broder. Old Township, um, Llewellyn, it's just been taken over by the city. It was, uh, um, or oh, I forget what township it was. Uh, anyway, and of course you had Garson and Cartercliffe and uh, Norton places. So fabulous and people, uh, and we're not talking, I am not. don't think that the, the people are not unfriendly. It's the environment, it's the ambience that's no longer welcoming uh, and I think that's what we need to stress and that's what's been destroyed by the current type of administration we have and I think that we need to remember that that was um, created in the dogmatic asylum of uh, Mike Harris's mind um, to create this um, metropolis that people call greater Sudbury, <laughs> and it's no more a city than perhaps Gatchel is. The fact of the matter is, though, it, it's very artificial, whereas the old communities where people did things, they volunteered, they needed a rec center, they built it, they needed a fire hall, they built it. And it was, everyone participated together and tended to look out for each other. And we all shared, people interacted, and there was no conflict, there was no competition as such, but everyone got along famously and enjoyed it. And now, we, seem to, we seem to have lost that. And I know that, John, going back to you, you've actually compiled a list, and I think you've looked at other amalgamated communities uh, across the province, and many of them have failed. And I think you feel that our experiment here has also probably gone up in smoke. Is that right? Well, I think uh, my background is actually geography and I took uh, quite a few planning courses when I was in university. And my feeling is that no planner, if he was asked to plan a community, would plan the city of Greater Sudbury. Because when you spread a small population across an enormous area, when you create it out of existing places that have strong cultural identities, then what you get at the end is an inefficient because the amount of infrastructure you have to build in the small tax base you have, and also a divisive environment because those people are going to resent any change in their autonomy. And that's understandable. Uh, they, we went from a large number of politicians here pre-amalgamation to a very small number. And that means a representation per person is dropped. This is not democratic. This is less democratic than it was before. And Lionel bears that out by talking about the way people don't feel that 
they belong here anymore. They feel their own communities have been taken away from them. So this is by far the worst. I, I, I comment, I, I, I was in a brief email exchange with a university professor in Ottawa who was looking at amalgamations and he didn't know much about Sudbury. Nobody does, of course. <laughs> That's one of our problems up here. But he did say that by what you're describing, yours is by far the worst. And he said, big cities can kind of adapt but a, a community that's isolated, like Sudbury, who's our nearest neighbor, that kind of thing, it's a, it's basically a very serious thing that can't be allowed to continue. That's what he told me. Wow. So I know that in the beginning, so-called beginning, we can go back to when we came to town, and and looking at the situation now, these individual communities were, I'm not saying self-sufficient, but most of them had a good balance sheet. They were, they were not broke. Uh, tax increases were, were, were reasonable. And the amalgamation seems to have changed all of that and, uh, and created this, uh, at least at the municipal level, a degree of unfriendliness. And we can see that around the, the council table, Lionel. There's, you know, even in the past uh, c- couple of sessions, there's been upset from the outlying area versus the so-called downtown area. Is there any solution for that? Yeah, I guess the double syllable, syllable word, the amalgamation. Ooh. And I think that uh, right now, it, Sudbury has gone beyond um, ability to afford. Um, Laurentian University is a mirror image of Sudbury. But the difference is that uh, their creditors can call in their loans. The trouble is with the city of Sudbury, operates the same identical administrative uh, system, um, where are the creditors? And we cannot call in the loans. We're an infinite pit of money for the administration to do what the hell they like. In the same vein as what happened at Laurentian, they basically blazed ahead. The Board of Governors, equivalent to the council, would simply rubber stamp whatever came down the line and lived in the glory of uh, what they were doing. Uh, look where they are now. But we have no recourse. And it may sound dramatic, but now I, I get a sense of how the people in Hong Kong feel <laughs> under Chinese rule. You know, at one time, they had their own culture, their own autonomy, and the uh, main government of China said, this is a good cash cow. Uh, we will tame the locals, um, they keep the money flowing in, they keep on obediently paying money to the great center, and everyone will live happily ever after. Well, we see what happens there. Mm-hmm. I think we're, we're, we're reaching very rapidly a tipping point here where we have some tremendous destructive mechanisms going on, especially when you have uh, the city official uh, insulting a councillor. And when he kicks back, um, there's hell to pay. You can't do that. You cannot criticize um, any of the staff. Um, you'll have the Integrity Commission, the Cancru Courts, and all that sort of thing. And, you know, if you run a business the, the same way, <laughs> you'd be busted by the week. No? That's, that's true. I mean, if we're not, and that's an example of, of uh, unfriendliness. For sure, but uh, getting to uh, back to John, now uh, you're on pension as am I, and uh, my uh, increase in my pension check was one percent uh, this year. And uh, last night we just announced that the city is at four uh, percent plus four point eight percent for water. Is this is this a sustainable? I should be asking an accountant, I guess. But uh, you know, you know, what's your feeling about this? Well. I'm more fortunate than most people. I have um, a reasonably good pension. It's indexed to inflation like yours. Um, in, the, in the short and medium term, the increases in taxes aren't a problem for me, but for someone who doesn't have a pension, for people that rely heavily on uh, their CPP, their OAS, and maybe GIS in some cases, if that's basically what they have, I don't know how they can continue living here. And the water, so I'm paying a huge increase every year. We've been doing it for years now. 
And my water is so high quality that I drive partway to Coniston to go to a water station that has one of the water because the water I and 55,000 other people in the South End drink is two and a half times above the sodium level. And I'm the age where I need to watch the amount of sodium I take. And I'm sure as hell I'm not going to be drinking salt in my water. So I go maybe once every 10 days, pick up about 50, 60 liters of water, and then dilute my water down to a safe level, about 15 parts per million, rather than 50 or 55 parts per million, where it is from time to time. So no, I think that's a perfect example. We have low quality services, many of us in this community, and we pay through the nose for them. So that, that's severe trouble. And at the end of the day, when it affects your health, you know what? That's where that's one of the reasons why for the first time in about, well, the first time in a few years now, for the first time I'm thinking about maybe leaving here because I don't, I can't live in a sea of incompetence in a city that appears to be going down the tubes. That's, so that's all is, there is to it. So what is the, uh, going back to Lionel here, we only have about uh, another five minutes left. Time goes by so quickly when we're having fun. But exactly. uh, well, what, what, what is the way, Lionel, that we can become more friendly of, uh, you know, the city says it's impossible. We, 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 we can't go back to what we were before. We can't go back to a regional system. That's impossible. We have to keep these taxes coming up to provide the services we need. Is there anything is I mean, short of doing what Laurentian is doing of, uh, and that's uh, what could be some relatively draconian measures is that was needed here. What, what is the solution? How can we become more friendly, Lionel? Well, I say nothing is impossible. I think the amalgamation has to happen really sincerely. And I think there's a move afoot. Um, it can be done. It was the product of the provincial government. They paid to get it. They paid to take it away. And I think it will return to um, the ambience that we did have. Um, when the Anderson farm needs to be fixed, the good people of Lively will have a few bake sales and raise a few bucks and get it fixed. They won't rely on some um, someone hiring a consultant, and getting an architect and having endless committee meetings before they decide to put a coat of paint on the place. I think in another word, also, uh, John, a new study of planning. Sudbury has got to be the worst example of planning ever on this earth. And you talk of salt. Now, the way to stop salt from getting in the water is to design it so that it doesn't drain in the water. 1970, Clem Denbach, the city manager, identified the issue of subsurface runoff and surface runoff contaminating Ramsey Lake. And this, is, this has been going on for that, for that length of time, and still we're building uh, structures around the lake, even the KED is being proposed for a recharge area directly into the lake. And uh, these, these are real concerns, but sort of to, to wrap it up, John, if we can go to you. And uh, is, there anything that, is there anything that can be done at the, at the council level, both those that we elect and also our administrators, when you can see that, uh, that Thunder Bay came in with a 1.6% tax increase and bury at under 1% and we're at the 4% as I mentioned right in the very beginning. And uh, we both belong to Friendly to Seniors and we represent you know, a large range of seniors and many who are on fixed income and with inflation over a period of time. Uh, this, this, this is a real concern. So is there any actions that we would suggest to our leaders if they are indeed listening that would uh, that uh, a path that we should be taking now to become more friendly, John. Okay, I agree with Lionel uh, that if you don't deamalgamate, no matter what you do in this community, there's it's going to be it's going to be the same end result. It's a major problem, and you know what? Just look at just think about it logically, and you'll realize we created a city that can't be anything but inefficient, inefficient and divisive. And cities like that don't last. They just don't last. And this city will decline. There's no question about that. In terms of short term, the first thing they can do is put all these big uh, big projects on hold 
because fundamentally any one of those projects that they put if we put them on hold in the short or medium term we'll do quite well without them in the meantime we need the money that they borrowed basically the 200 million dollars that they borrowed we could use that money to sort of tide us over uh, by and maybe prevent us from eliminating you know nickel and dime things like crossing guards and so on and so forth uh, the biggest single thing we do in the short uh, term is put all those projects on hold until we really figure out what our financial situation is. Long term, we have to de-amalgamate. If we don't, what's going to happen is people get more and more unhappy. Even if they can afford to live here, they may very well leave. That's what I think. And that's the way I'm feeling. I'm frustrated. And I think what we have to do, we have to call into account the decisions that the council slash city hall management are making. I think that there needs to be a third party investigation of the city government and the city staff at the senior level. I honestly believe that. I, what happened with Mr. Archer and our counselor, one of our counselors is beyond the pale. And I remember Jim Gordon in a further incident where Mr. Archer took on private citizens and forced them to appear before an Ontario board of some sort. Jim Gordon said, if he had been in my, under my control, I would have fired him. And that's the truth. That's not, I'm not making this up. So you know what? I think that in the short run, we don't put those big projects. We don't spend the money. In the second, and then we also evaluate, have a third party evaluate the effectiveness of our council and of our senior administrators because you know what spending proposing to spend money in the face of a, of a huge economic downturn that we're all in right across this whole country in the world it seems to me that you know if, if i were to do that someone might say do you have mental problems <laughs> you're right. right are you in touch with reality john gall that's true well of course many of us have been many many people have suggested that as a matter of fact yeah <laughs> so, that's true. lino if you can have the final word here before we <laughs> have to sign off on uh, this uh, what we're hoping will be of uh, a route to a more friendly Sudbury. yeah i think uh john alluded to we need a, what, a, what i call a forensic audit of the going on <laughs> city hall uh, well, that, it, 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 one, one something that the planners haven't got a clue about. Uh, well, I taught engineering, so I know a little bit about planning mine. But really and truly, um, I, I, I think that um, uh, it, it, it's a pitiful example of planning, number one. Uh, and I think that really and truly, um, these problems can be solved. And at one time with the small communities, uh, you, you solved a lot of the problems in the grocery lineup or in the um, coffee shop or wherever. There was a certain degree of collegiality within the community, within the, the lo local people. And I think that we need to go back badly to those days. Like right now, it's an unmitigated mess. And it's very much a mirror image of Laurentian where the administration did what the heck they felt like. And uh, you, you have to wonder why they would want to build another library. And the cost of building a library is horrendous because they just take into account the weight of the book. I know, it's amazing. We already have the library, which was uh, renovated in 1998. And incidentally, it's the same age as Memorial Hospital, uh, Marymount Academy, and the Federal Building downtown. And these buildings don't seem to be on the chopping block. So unfortunately, we run out of time, but we want to thank Lionel Rudd, who's uh, been with us. And of course, uh, as we mentioned earlier on, it can be heard uh, on CBC from time to time with a few comments. And also uh, John Gall, who was uh, using his wife's iPad today. <laughs> we are becoming technically aware. And a lot of us are rejected you know, in, in the community because we're old folks, you know? I'm, I mean, what do we do? I mean, uh, we're twice as old as some of the administrators or maybe even more than that, some of the administrators. So we're sort of dismissed as being just old fogies, but uh, we represent 
uh, an ever-growing percentage of the population here in Sudbury, and we deserve to be heard, and we want to be more friendly. So thanks very much, gang, and until next time, goodbye for now. Bye. Bye.